The Prime Minister indeed did today try to get back to the basics, the here and now. He held a meeting of National Cabinet with all the Premiers to try and sort out some big problems. One thing he had hoped to achieve with this meeting was to stop the explosion in costs that we've seen in the National Disability Scheme, which I can't believe it now. It's now spending more than $40 billion a year, and that's soaring by the year, on more than 600,000 Australians. This is supposed to be only for the seriously disabled. 600,000 now. But all that the Premiers and the Prime Minister agreed to today was to slow the increase in costs to 8% a year, still well ahead of inflation. And to do that, the Prime Minister even had to pay the states and territories an extra $3.5 billion in GST. Now, Michael, is this a reform or is it just kicking the can down the road? This is a dog and pony show. Um, it's, it's there to create the impression that uh, the government um, is now focused and working. Look, I can tell you that this agreement is going to fall in a heap. Um, what they, If you read between the lines, we won't find out the details till tomorrow when we get the actual reforms. Uh, but what they're proposing, and I've been Mr. Treasurer, I know this is not going to work. They're proposing that states take on a lot of the responsibility uh, in some sort of community-based uh, primary care structure. Now, that's going to be costly, and um, it is uh, certainly not going to be um, met by the funds that they're currently put on the table. The problem with the NDIS, it's a honeypot, uh, it, and it's got all sorts of uh, providers and uh, chunks in it, um, you know, coming up with diagnoses that, that uh, you know, in, in the past wouldn't have been funded. Um, yes, there is a core group that really does need the support of the NDIS, but uh, this reform package is not going to be, in the long term, a sustainable basis for reforming the NDIS. And I'll just make the point, you know, they're talking about this uh, two health agreements out. Now, you know, these health agreements barely last one or two years before the numbers start falling apart, and yet, we, yet we're here to believe that, um, you know, we're going to have an eight-year or ten-year agreement that somehow is going to be robust. Uh, it's not going to happen, Andrew. Um, tomorrow will be the real test if yeah. there is real reform. And Cameron, when we, Cameron Milner, when we see uh, the problems here, you know, so many people now attracted to this scheme... You see amazing money put in there. You see uh, administrative problems where you get all these consultants to, you know, where the money goes to, to help one person. You see overcharging of things. You know, NDIS service, I see, I've seen cases of costing eight times more than you can get by an internet search. Things even like a cane. Uh, you see people being taken off on NDIS money for cruises or something. Let's all go, you know, you're disabled, I'll take you to Bali or whatever, I don't know, or a health farm, and we're paying for it. It's just incredible. I don't see a full-on assault on that. Well, clearly, as you said, some people with serious disabilities need the package, and I think it's, NDIS is great for them. But the reality is that we have to have a conversation as the population about autism being an entry point for NDIS. 75%. 75% of, of NDIS participants under 18 have an autism-related concern. Uh, five to seven-year-old boys, 11% of them are now qualifying for NDIS autism packages. It's a serious issue, and the community needs to have a conversation about who's responsible. Is it the teacher in the classroom or NDIS or the doctors and others, as you say, who are in the middle asking for $100,000 packages for boys who just might need to read and write a little easier? That's all. There you go. There you go. Cameron Milner, Michael Costa, thank you very much to you both.